Good morning, and welcome to the City Planning Commission Remote Public Meeting. Brian Singer, our Senior Director of Land Use and Commission Operations, will now outline the general information about the remote public hearing and how to participate. Thank you. Verbal testimony may be provided online or by calling in on your telephone. If you wish to speak, you must first register through the NYC Engage portal. Uh, if you wish to access the hearing, please register through the upcoming meetings page of the NYC Engage portal. A link to join the hearing is on the landing page after you register. So don't close the landing page without first clicking on the link. If you are accessing the hearing via phone and wish to speak, you must register with the dial-in participant hotline at the numbers listed on the screen. If one of the numbers is busy, uh, please try another one. Uh, the meeting ID is 618-237-7396. Press pound to skip the participation ID. The password is the numeral one. The phone number is also posted on the upcoming meetings page of the NYC Engage portal. Uh, no matter how you are accessing the meeting, you must first register if you wanna speak those accessing the meeting online will have the option to turn on their camera while giving testimony. So when it is your turn to speak, you'll be notified and promoted to a panelist. This will allow you to unmute your microphone and grant you the ability to turn on your camera. Please listen closely for your name to be called. There will be a short period where you will appear that you are no longer in the meeting. Uh, don't be alarmed. You should rejoin the meeting as a panelist. If you're accessing, accessing the hearing via phone, your name will be called from the list of registered speakers. Once your name has been called, you'll be given the temporary ability to unmute yourself. You do this by pressing star six to unmute your phone. For those listening to the hearing through the online live stream who have not yet registered but want to speak, uh, you must first register to speak through the upcoming meetings page of the NYC Engage portal. It's not possible to testify through the uh, live stream. For those accessing the hearing via phone, who have not yet registered to speak but wish to do so, you also must register to speak uh, through the dial-in participant hotline that I described a moment ago. It's not possible to testify via phone without first having registered. Speakers are limited to three minutes of testimony. There are a few exceptions to this time limit. Elected officials are accorded the courtesy of jumping to the front of the queue and are not limited to three minutes. If, a consec if consecutive translation services are being used, the time will be extended to five minutes. And if an applicant team with three or more speakers wishes to make a team presentation, the team will generally be allowed a total of 10 minutes. Uh, the chair will announce when the time limit is reached. Please be mindful of potential background noise during your testimony. Make sure that if you're watching the proceedings via live stream, that the live stream is muted when you begin your testimony. Otherwise, there will be an echo. Uh, if you wish to submit written testimony, it should be submitted to the Department of City Planning. Mailing and email addresses can be found on our website, planning.nyc.gov. Lastly, note that this remote public hearing is being recorded. Thank you. So thank you. Good morning and welcome to the City Planning Commission remote public meeting. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, all. This is the City Planning Commission public meeting held remotely through the NYC Engage portal. Today is Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. I will now call the roll. Chair Emmott. Here. Vice Chairman Knuckles. Here. Co Commissioner Bernie. Here. Commissioner Capelli. Here. Commissioner Cerullo. Here. Commissioner Dweck. Here. Commissioner Eady. Here. Commissioner Levin. Here. Commissioner Marin. Here. Commissioner Ortiz is absent. <laughs> Commissioner Rampashad. Here. A quorum is present. The first item is the approval of the minutes of the public meeting of Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021. So on the minutes, can I get a, a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay, Aye. thank you. Aye. 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 So the minutes are approved. Next item, scheduling, calendar numbers one through four. We have resolutions for adoption, scheduling Wednesday, December 1st, 2021, for a remote public hearing to be held through the NYC Engage portal. On the resolution, can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The resolutions are adopted, thank you. 
The next part of the calendar is the report section on page seven. Reports, Borough of Queens, calendar number five, CD 14, C200299 ZMQ, in the matter of an application for a zoning map amendment concerning Beach 79th Street self storage rezoning. For a favorable report on calendar number five, Chair Lermont. Yes. Vice Chairman Knuckles. Yes. Commissioner Bernie. Yes. Commissioner Capelli. Yes. Commissioner Cerullo. Yes. Commissioner Dweck. Yes. Commissioner Eady. Yes. Commissioner Levin. Yes. Commissioner Marine. Yes. Commissioner Rampashad. Yes. A favorable report has been adopted on calendar <clears throat> number five. Borough of Queens, calendar numbers six and seven, CD 12, calendar number six, N210232, ZRQ, calendar number seven, N210233, ZAQ. In the matter of applications for zoning text amendment and an authorization concerning 160-05 Archer Avenue. For favorable report on calendar number six and for adoption on calendar number seven, Chair Lermont. Yes. Vice Chairman Knuckles. Yes. Commissioner Bernie. Yes. Commissioner Capelli. Yes. Commissioner Cerullo. Yes. Commissioner Dweck. Yes. Commissioner Eady. Yes. Commissioner Levin. Yes. Commissioner Marine. Yes. Commissioner Rampashad. Yes. A favorable report has been adopted on calendar number six and calendar number seven has been adopted. Borough Brooklyn, calendar numbers eight through 16, CD1, calendar number eight, C220062, ZMK, calendar number nine, N220063, ZRK, calendar number 10, C220064, ZSK, calendar number 11, C220070, ZSK, Calendar number 12, C220061 MLK. Calendar number 13, C210425 MMK. Calendar number 14, N220065 ZAK. Calendar number 15, N220068 ZAK. Calendar number 16, N220069 ZAK. In a matter of applications for zoning map, zoning text, and city map amendments, special permits, a landfill, and authorizations concerning River Ring. For favorable reports on calendar numbers 8, 11 through 13, favorable reports as modified on calendar numbers 9 and 10, and for adoption on calendar numbers 14 through 16. Chair Lermont. Yes. Vice Chairman Knuckles. Yes. Commissioner Bernie. Yes. Commissioner Capelli. Yes. Commissioner Cerullo. Yes. Commissioner Dweck. Yes. Commissioner Eady. Yes. Commissioner Levin. Yes. Commissioner Manine. Yes. Commissioner Rampashad. Yes. Favorable reports have been adopted on calendar numbers 8, 11 through 13. Favorable reports as modified have been adopted on calendar numbers nine and 10 and calendar numbers 14 through 16 have been adopted. Borough of Staten Island, calendar numbers 17 and 18, CD1, calendar number 17, N220018ZAR, calendar number 18, N220019ZAR. In the matter of applications for the grant of authorizations concerning 10 Charter Oak Road for adoption on calendar numbers 17 and 18. Chair Lermont. Yes. Vice Chairman Knuckles. Yes. Commissioner Bernie. Yes. Commissioner Capelli. Yes. Commissioner Cerullo. Yes. Commissioner Dweck. Yes. Commissioner Eady. Yes. Commissioner Levin. Yes. Commissioner Manine. Yes. Commissioner Rampashad. Yes. Calendar numbers 17 and 18 have been adopted. Borough of Staten Island, calendar numbers 19 through 21, our last voting item for this morning, commissioners. 
CD3, calendar number 19, N210216RAR. Calendar number 20, N210245RAR. Calendar number 21, N210241RAR. In the matter of applications for the grant of authorizations concerning 4295 Arthur Kill Road. For adoption on calendar numbers 19 through 21. Chair Lermont. Yes. Vice Chairman Knuckles. Yes. Commissioner Bernie. Yes. Commissioner Capelli. Yes. Commissioner Cerullo. Yes. Commissioner Dweck. Yes. Commissioner Eady. Yes. Commissioner Levin. Yes. Commissioner Marin. Yes. Commissioner Rampashad. Yes. Calendar numbers 19 through 21 have been adopted. Thank you, commissioners. The next part of the calendar is the public hearing section on page 20. Borough of Queens, calendar number 22, CD 12, N220041 PXQ. A public hearing in a matter of a notice of intent to acquire office space concerning the law department. There will be a three minute team presentation. Good morning. My name is Jenny Nagel and Degoyen. I'm here from the law department. Thank you for having us here today to present our proposed office space acquisition at Gertz Plaza at 16210 Jamaica Avenue, downtown Jamaica in the borough of Queens. Next slide, please. The New York City Law Department represents the city, the mayor and elected officials and all city agencies in all affirmative and defense of civil litigation. We also handle juvenile delinquency proceedings brought in family court as well as administrative code enforcement proceedings brought in criminal court. In 2017, our responsibilities changed in family court due to the Raise the Age legislation. On April 10th, 2017, the New York, State, New York State raised the age of criminal responsibility to 18 years of age. This was done in two stages, for 16-year-olds on October 1st, 2018, and then for 17-year-olds on October 1st, 2019. That means for law that we are now involved in many cases for 16 and 17-year-olds, which led to an increase in staff and therefore a need for additional space. Next slide, please. The Queens Family Court can handle approximately 1,000 referrals annually, and many of the cases in family court involve actions against the most vulnerable members of the community, including very young victims of crime. These cases involve a very careful review and assessment through confidential communications, which lead to the resolution of sensitive cases in family court under some of the strictest time constraints under the law. Next slide, please. As mentioned, additional staff caused a need for additional office space to fulfill the mandate created by Raise the Aid. The law department's existing family court office space in the Queens Family Court building is insufficient to house the new staff associated with this program. When we looked for space, we had several requirements. We needed office space for 57 staff. We needed to be near the Queens Family Court building and other Queens Law Department offices. We also wanted it to be accessible to clients using public transportation and a safe and confidential location in which to interview victims and witnesses. Next slide, please. Here you can see a map. If you look to the right side of the page, you can see the selected site at Gertz Plaza. If you go a little further to the left, you'll see the Queens Family Court building. It is very close. Next slide, please. This site at Gertz Plaza fulfills our requirements. It is within walking distance of the Queens County Family Court building. It has abundant access to public transit buses, subways, and even the Long Island Railroad. It has a good space layout for us because we're on a single floor and it has new exterior lighting. Next slide, please. Here you can see the proposed layout in the current design. We have two different areas. If you look toward the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see the client area. That consists of many interview and conference rooms as well as intake space and a lobby. We also have internal bathrooms. If you look to the left, the yellow area, you have the staff area, which is mostly offices, conference rooms, and workstations. There is a secure access point that can be accessed via a card. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nicholson. Your, um, your time has expired. Uh, but um, if there are uh, other, I see other members of your team are signed up. Are they intended to speak or are they just uh, uh, in case you need to answer questions? There for questions. We have Scott Bernstein here specifically from DCAS if there are least questions. Okay. Okay. Thank you uh, very much. 
So I will ask the commission if there are any questions. I see that Commissioner Rompershot has his, oh, Vice Chair Knuckles has his hand raised. Please, Vice Chair. Well, I will see to uh, uh, Commissioner Rompershot. He had his, his hand up first. Okay. Oh, the Vice Chair can go first. Commissioner oh. Rompershot. <laughs> okay, I, I only have one question. Uh, I know you said the space can accommodate up to 57, but if needed, uh, can you accommodate more in case there's an increase over the next few years? It's, we do have some space that we could possibly convert to that, but honestly, I don't think we're going to go above that. You know, current caseloads don't seem that we'd indicate that would not indicate a need for more space than that right now. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Capelli. Uh, yes, a uh, question I asked at the review session. Uh, I wanted to know what the comparable rents were in the area, what was looked at and turned down, and what was the reason? Hey, uh, actually, there was another site that had been looked at which was um, the first site uh, that was a preference of the law department, 159-26 uh, Jamaica Avenue. Uh, it actually is a retail space. We had some uh, misunderstanding with the ownership uh, when they quoted the rents. It was actually a net lease as opposed to a gross lease. So it, it actually doubled in price. Uh, and then the other sites that were looked at were a little bit farther away um, and also did not work um, in terms of a layout for the law department, uh, building 169-25 Jamaica Avenue uh, would have been on two uh, floors as opposed to being on one floor. So there would have been a duplication of certain um, uh, features on that floor, security and that type of thing. So this was the best. There was another building, but that was also too far away, 166-02 uh, Jamaica Avenue. Um, those were the primary sites. Uh, we, we, we definitely negotiated a deal that was um, within market, if not lower than market. So we're quite happy with this location. How did you determine what market was? Uh, we had a tenant rep that had looked around and we have comps uh, and the comps were all on negotiated deals, all higher than what we uh, negotiated here. All right, could you send us the comps? Uh, I will have to talk with people. Uh, that's the first time I've been asked to send you comps, but yes, I could probably do that. Thank I you. Thank you. Um, Vice Chair Knuckles. Uh, thank you. Uh, Scott, what is the proposed term of the lease? It's, uh, 20, of it's uh, 20 years from substantial completion. It, it, the lease term actually commences on execution and it will be 20 years from substantial completion, but no longer than 21 years. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Commissioner Levin. Um, yes, just following up on that, our briefing sheet indicates, Mr. Bernstein, that the, the DCAS executed a license agreement for the space in 2019. Um, has but the law department hasn't been occupying, has the law department been occupying this space under the license agreement? I'd like to defer that to the law department. Hey there, it's Jen again. Um, we were in there, everybody moved out right around COVID and we have not been back in. Okay, and is the plan then that there will be some work done? Mr. Bernstein referred to substantial completion. Uh, yes, there's a there's substantial work that does need to be done and the rent will be abated during that time. We'll also have uh, a small free run period uh, after um, the space is completed. But for the entire time the space is built, and we uh, believe it could take up to nine months to build out the space, uh, that that rent will be abated during that time. Uh, I do want to point out the rent is actually a little bit higher under the license. So it is uh, you know, critical that we execute the lease. The rent actually gets reduced. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much. Um, are there any other questions from the commission? So I don't see any other individuals signed up to speak, but if there's anybody else present who would like to speak on this item, um, please uh, sign up right now. Um, and Ryan, do you have anyone else who has signed up? No, there are no further speakers on this item. Okay, so then this, this hearing is closed. Next item, Borough of the Bronx, calendar number 23, CD8C220082PCX. 
a public hearing in a matter of an application for the site selection and acquisition of property concerning NYPD Bronx Special Victim Services. Thank you. This will be a 10 minute team presentation. Is that my cue to start, Madam Chair? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Uh, good morning, my name is Jeff Rubin. I'm a planner with Philip Habib and Associates. We are consultants to NYPD. I'm going to be presenting about the proposed project and the project site overall. And then I, uh, two representatives from NYPD will be discussing the proposed facility in more detail. Next slide, please. The Bronx Special Victims Squad is proposing to move to a new facility in the northwestern portion of the Bronx in Community District 8 in the Kingsbridge neighborhood. Next slide, please. Currently, the NYPD SVS unit is located in 1086 Simpson Street in the Longwood neighborhood. It's an old precinct building and it contains several NYPD units besides the Special Victims Squad. The Special Victims Squad shares space with other units. And to give you a sense of how uh, the shared space works there, when the SVS unit moved out of the building, it will only free up approximately 1,500 square feet in the building. Next slide, please. More information about the proposed site at 188 West 230th Street. The address is also 2992 Exterior Street. It's a site a uh, half block west of the Major Deacon Expressway and a half block, half block east of Broadway and close to a, a number one subway station. Next slide, please. The NYPD is proposing to move into an existing privately owned building into approximately 20,000 square feet in a 92,000 square foot building. The building is a three level building, cellar, first and second floors. Existing occupants, which would remain, include the school construction authority and the offices of the inspector general. There's also a public parking garage. Next slide, please. This is a schematic showing the, the basic layout of the building. The cellar level has the public parking garage and then the first and second floors have offices. Next slide, please. As a reminder, the actions here before the, the Euler process is a site selection with an acquisition. Next slide, please. I, I want to point out two, uh, I think, key milestones for the project so far going through the Euler process. Both Community Board 8 and the Borough President uh, issued favorable recommendations on the application. Both parties had concerns about parking which NYP responded to, and we'll, we can discuss further on in the presentation, and which led to the positive recommendations. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a proposed layout of the space that would be occupied by the Special Victim Squad. To orientate yourself, on the left of the hand side of the drawing would be North West 230th Street. The space is split up into three distinct areas for different populations. The area in blue is where NYPD staff and other supportive uh, eight individuals would be based. The area in yellow on the upper left-hand corner is where victims would come in for interviews with NYPD and other personnel. The area in salmon on the right-hand side of the drawing is where uh, suspects would be brought in for questioning. And I also want to emphasize here, not only do you have spatial separation, but you also have access separation. And uh, victims would enter the site through a lobby on West 230th, 230th Street, whereas Suspects would be brought in in NYPD custody on the other side of the site through an accessory parking lot that would be controlled by NYPD. Uh, and that's the uh, exterior street. And we have photos we'll show you in a moment. Next slide, please. This shows the uh, 20 space accessory parking lot, which would be part of the facility connected to the building and completely under NYPD control. It would be a secured uh, parking lot. It would be accessed from exterior street. Next slide, please. We have four photos. I want to go through these quickly in the interest of time. But on the top two photos I'll show the West 230th Street side of the site where victims and uh, NYPD personnel can enter the site via a public lobby at the first floor of the building. The lower two photos show the exterior street side of the site, an accessory parking lot that would be under NYPD control. I'll also point out that this is a sloped site. So you have a situation where what we call the cellar level is below grade on the West 230th Street side of the site, whereas it is at grade level on exterior street. So uh, NYPD personal and fleet vehicles would park in this accessory parking lot. And then the 
as needed, they would bring suspects into the site and up one level to the offices. Next slide, please. I'm now going to turn the presentation over to uh, two representatives from NYPD. I believe uh, Sergeant Felix is on the phone. Hello, Sergeant Dina Felix here, Bronx Special Victims. Yes, uh, Sergeant Felix, if you can just discuss how the, what um, the Special Victim Squad's operations are, staffing and your hours of operation. So um, most of us, so we uh, specialize in investigating sexual um, sex crimes, um, any victim over 13 years old. Uh, for the most part, we work from 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. Um, we have changing tours to different people at different times, but mostly those are the hours that we work. Um, right now we have 27 uh, people assigned to our unit, um, 23 detectives, three sergeants and one lieutenant. And um, do we have any questions in our suit? Or? Uh, before we get to questions, let's, let's move ahead through the slides. Next slide, please. The Sergeant Felix has already covered the hours that the, the uh, facility operates. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, one of the questions that did come up during the, re the review process is the question of parking. Uh, I think, candidly, we all know that there are concerns at a lot of NYPD facilities with parking. We want to emphasize a few points here. Number one, this is a facility that is much smaller than a precinct. Um, NYPD folks can speak to that. Secondly, this uh, DCAS has managed to find a site that really meets NYPD's needs here with the separate entrances and with a, a 20 space accessory parking lot where NY, NYPD can park personal vehicles and fleet vehicles. And, and we can discuss that more if the commissioners would like. Um, next slide, please. Uh, I also wanna emphasize here in NYPD, please feel free to jump in here too. But uh, in response to concerns raised by the community board, community board eight that is, uh, NY, uh, the NYPD issued a letter to the community board outlining commitments to keep uh, their vehicles off of West 230th Street and in the accessory parking lot. And uh, I don't know, Sergeant Felix, or if any other uh, representatives of NYPD want to talk more about the parking situation. Um, there are the 20 parking spots that are um, are there. And like I said, at any given time, we, we don't have that many working at one time. Like, for instance, today we have there's eight of us working. Um, people are off vacation, um, court. Um, and training, so that is a way. That's enough parking. Definitely enough parking spots for all of us. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, I think this this sort of reiterates the point. But uh, Sergeant, if, if you can speak to what the advantage to the facility of having the the separate access points, you know, the one on West Two Thirtieth Street and one on Exterior Street, why that's so important for your operations. So currently, um, both victims and um, subjects would um, enter through the same door. And um, we really wouldn't want to re-victimize a victim and have them see um, their offender or um, the offender seeing someone that, you know, they had an instance with. So this would actually be way better so that we can have two separate entrances and exits so that they don't have to see each other at all, um, which makes our investigations way easier. Um, and it's more private also to bring people into the side and, um, you know, for the, the, the perpetrators as well so that everyone doesn't see them coming in and out and with handcuffs or anything if we bring them in through the side. And so to create a better place for them to sit as well, because right now there's uh, there's uh, multiple units in this building. So at any point, you know, they could be bringing in someone and they're coming in through the same entrance as our victims, which, you know, kind of creates an issue at times with for us, especially if they have kids and stuff too, because a lot of them bring their kids so that we can speak to them as well. Okay, thank you. And I apologize to uh, to the commission. I, we were going to have one other representative from NYPD. I don't know if he was able to join. Uh, he may have had a last minute um, emergency, but thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you very much for this very important work that you know we're proud of the police department doing. Um, and I will now ask the commission whether or not they have any questions for this team. Uh, Commissioner Bernie. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. And I just want to thank you for thoroughly addressing the parking issue, because as you mentioned, it was a concern among a number of people, including me. And I think uh, I'm pretty satisfied if, if 27 staff and then your shift is running between eight and 12, you should be, you should be fine. 
And just to reiterate uh, how much we do value the work that you do, it's so important. And I hope that this facility makes your life uh, easier and makes your job easy to do. So I thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bernie. Um, Commissioner Capelli. Uh, yes, uh, uh, first of all, uh, in addition to the sensitivities of the victim, you're also protecting the rights of the accused by having separate entrances because in many instances, uh, you're putting people into a photo array or a uh, lineup and uh, the identification uh, would be tainted if they were both going in through the same entrance. So that's also imp uh, important. Uh, point for uh, in terms of the, uh, the civil liberties of the accused. In terms of the number of cars and vehicles, you had said that the maximum number of people that would be working would be 26, was it, the officers and superior officers? That's all that, that's all, all the people that are assigned to the unit, but it's usually around six to 10 people working at one at one time. Six to ten, and each of them would be uh, would have a personal car as well. Some of us don't use don't have a car because you know the, the, we um, take the train in. A lot of us live in some of us live upstate, so we just take the Metro North in. And some of us also, yeah. So most of us, it's about like maybe three or four that don't even have a vehicle. So, and how many official vehicles would be on a shift with six to ten people? We have four official vehicles. Okay. All right. Uh, that sounds like it works. Uh, I, I know there's a lot of sensitivity to parking. Uh, I live not far from the 120 precinct in Staten Island, and we've had an issue for 40 years in dealing wow. with the parking situation. And once you give it, once the uh, police department gets the okay, they give assurances, but the problem doesn't seem to go away. So uh, we'd like to deal with this on the front end as opposed to trying to figure out how to deal with it afterwards. Uh, thank you, and thank you for your service. Thank you. Are there any additional questions from the commission? I thank this team for this presentation. Uh, is there anyone else uh, who would like to speak on this item that has signed up in the interim? We don't. I don't see any further speakers signed up. Okay. So seeing none, I will say that this hearing is closed. Thank you very much. Earl Brooklyn, calendar numbers 24 and 25, our last hearing item for this morning, commissioners. The CD5, calendar number 24, C210285, ZMQ. Calendar number 25, N210286, ZRK. Uh, public hearing in the matter of applications for zoning map and zoning text amendments concerning 749. Van Sindren Avenue rezoning. And as a correction, calendar number 24 is C210285 ZMK. Uh, my apologies, commissioners. Thank you. This looks like it is not a team presentation and uh, uh, the team, Mr. Gayon. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, my name is Joe Gayon with Ackerman uh, Land Use Council for the applicant. I'm joined by Jamie Weissman, a representative of the applicant, Rachel Ehrlich of Datner Architects, Richard Bass from my office and John McNally from Philippi Beaven Associates who are also available for questions. Next slide. We are here today to present an application for a zoning map amendment to change an existing M11 zoning district to a C44L zoning district and a zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area coterminous with the project area. Next slide. As shown on the map to the left, the rezoning area is, is presently located in an M11 zoning district, which does not permit residential use. And as shown on the map to the right, the applicant is proposing to amend the zoning map to establish a C44L zoning district over the rezoning area. I would like to note um, the C44L zoning district includes the same bulk controls as the R7A zoning district that is mapped directly to the north of the development site. Next slide. As you can see on, on, on this slide, the surrounding area generally consists of residential use and Van Sinderen Plaza uh, is located directly to the north of the development site, which is a seven story mixed residential and commercial building within a mapped R7A zoning district. And as you can also see, just to the north is uh, the new lot subway station, which is serviced by the L train. Next slide. Uh, as shown in these photographs, the development site is presently improved with three auto, auto body repair shops. 
Um, and it's the applicant's intent to relocate these existing use, uses to other sites uh, controlled by the applicant. Next slide. The proposed rezoning would facilitate the development of a nine story quality housing residential building with approximately 119 affordable dwelling units. And this enforces the existing residential land use patterns in the surrounding area, um, including to the north and east of the development site. And uh, like I previously said, this is in close proximity to public transit. Next slide. It's the applicant's intent to develop the building in accordance with HBD's ELLA term sheet, which includes a 15% set aside for formless, form, formerly homeless households. Next slide. We can skip this slide. Next slide. And one thing I'd like to point out is um, half of the units in the proposed development will be reserved for either formerly homeless or families earning less than 30% AMI, and a full half will be reserved for families earning equal to or less than 50% AMI. Next slide. You can skip this one as well, and I just want to go to the renderings. Next slide. This is an illustrative massing, so you can see the five foot uh, setback that is manda mandated in the C44L zoning district, which will improve pedestrian circulation to the new lot subway station. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Gayon. Um, are there any questions from the commission? Vice Chair Knuckles. Thank you. Could you speak uh, to the acoustic treatment of the windows given the close proximity of the, of the uh, proposed development to uh, the new lots uh, subway line? Uh, could you talk about the uh, uh, acoustical treatment of the windows uh, so as to uh, hopefully mitigate what would presumably be uh, noise issues. Rachel Ehrlich is from Daten Architects is registered and she, she can speak to that. So if she gets promoted or when they, they turn it over to her, she can, she can definitely speak to that. She signed up to speak next. So any questions for the architect, if you guys share now can be responded to her. Yeah. That's, that's my question. If there are there any other questions for for Mr. Gayon in the, in the meantime, otherwise we can move on to Rachel Ehrlich. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Gayon. Uh, we'll move on to uh, Rachel Ehrlich, who can answer um, the vice chair's question now. Good morning. I'm Rachel Ehrlich, uh, associate principal at Dadner Architects, and very pleased to answer questions about this exciting project. Uh, Vice Chair, um, I am not sure if through the process of rezoning this parcel, whether an e-designation would be applied. The e-designation would be uh, one which uh, requires certain environmental remediation on the site, which would include noise mitigation, which is an issue you rightly raised for the site, which is directly facing the elevated L train. In any case, whether the e-designation is imposed or not, we would seek to uh, provide high performance uh, triple pane windows to mitigate uh, noise to the residential units. And the overall wall assembly would be very high performing with added insulation and uh, masonry, which would help block the sound. We would perform an acoustic analysis to measure how much sound would enter each unit in the worst case scenario and ensure that it met requirements uh, to ensure a high quality of life and um, no, uh, not, not exceed the uh, required amount for uh, the maximum noise that's permitted in, in these dwelling units. So whether OER, the Office of Environmental Remediation, uh, requires a certain um, minimum amount that we meet, or whether we extrapolate from uh, similar sites that we have designed along the elevated train in this neighborhood, we would certainly provide high performance wall assembly and high performance windows to address the issue. Commissioner Murray. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Ehrlich, I just wanna follow up on the questioning of the chair, of the vice chair. Uh, I, would, I would posit that there is a required decibel level that is required to be maintained um, along elevated uh, subways. And I'm sure that HPD will have an opinion as to what the decibel level will be. And of course, require you to design your wall according. Accordingly, so I just wanted to to state that because I, I do know, having worked with HPD in the past, that whether or not it is a requirement of the building department, they will require some decibel level mitigation mitigation along subway lines. Thank you, Commissioner. I concur, and I'll Thank mention you. another important design factor here, which is that we are proposing to provide ventilation and heating and cooling with mechanical systems that do not require penetrations in the facade facing the 
elevated train. So there won't be any air conditioner sleeves or PTAC sleeves that permit un unmitigated sound to enter. It will be a sealed envelope with a window and a masonry and metal panel facade. Um, this is an important way that we'll keep sound out of the units with high performance um, mechanical systems that pipe uh, fresh filtered air into the units mechanically rather than through the windows. Thank you. And I'll know for the record, there I, is an Edith. I have, I have one further question. Sorry, I was so muted. Whatever's required. The chair? Sure. I have one further question. I'm sorry, I was yeah. muted. Um, the, my other question would, would, would be relative to. Um, the other question would be relative to the environment. Are, are you required here in this project? I know that I know that HPD is moving towards all electric buildings. Is this a building that is intended to be all electric? Yes, we are intending this to be all electric for space conditioning, uh, which is the, the primary source of um, uh, burning fossil fuels, which would be you know heating the building. The technology has not entirely caught up yet for hot water heating. And so we will work with our sustainability and energy consultant to see if new systems are coming online that will allow us to also provide hot water heating at a scale for a building of this size that is all electric. Um, it is our desire and our goal to move towards electrification of all systems, and we will make that a priority if it's technically feasible specifically for hot water heating. And what about the, the unit stoves um, uh, and, 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 and ovens? Are they intended to be electric or gas? Great point. Those will be electric. So there'll be no combustion in the units themselves. Thank you very much, Ms. Olek. Uh, Commissioner Ramprashad. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. I, I noticed that uh, you actually mentioned that they're extending the sidewalk by five feet. Uh, are you going to have tree planting? at the frontage of the building? I mean, I see it on the rendering, but on the plans that we have in our set, I don't see any being called out. So I'm just curious, are you gonna treat the sidewalk with uh, tree planting? So the sidewalk is being widened under the C44L requirement, which is you know, um, meant to set the building back to mitigate noise and provide a, you know, a more uh, commodious pedestrian passage. We wouldn't want to then, um, other than the required street tree planting, which we will absolutely provide for zoning, uh, uh, conformance. We will, so we'll have tree pits along the sidewalk. The, the planting will occur at the setback for the residential entry. So there's a, 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 a small plaza that distinguishes the residential entrance from the uh, retail and commercial entrances. And within that area, we will provide uh, landscaping and planting um, to, to soften the landscape and, and the street experience there. And also because we are required if we set the building back to provide planting within that area. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions for Ms. Ehrlich? Okay, thank you, Ms. Ehrlich. Um, thank you. We'll move on. I, I'm not clear, is John McNally intending to um, testify or was he here only for questions? He can tell us. Mr. McNally. Good morning, commissioners. Um, my name is John McNally from Philip Abeban Associates. Uh, we prepared the environmental assessment statement for the application. I don't have any prepared testimony, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions for Mr. McNally? Seeing none, we'll just say thank you. The next uh, person signed up to speak is Edward Perez. Hello, everybody um, in attendance to the meeting. Um, I wanna comment in favor of this project. Um, with considerations for protection of the adjacent structures, like the elevated subway track and adjacent buildings. Um, excavation, foundation, and superstructure phases of construction are when the noisy, noisy activities occur during uh, this project, more than likely affecting adjacent buildings and their tenants. Um, the demolition of three existing buildings followed by the construction of a nine-story development is the type of activity that is more than likely gonna cause um, these excessive vibrations and possibly horizontal and vertical displacement of the adjacent structures. Um, considering that you have an MTA track right across, uh, you know, this is something that you got to look at. At the very least, uh, if you're not considering a, a monitoring plan, conduct a pre-construction survey so you could see the existing conditions. You know, at Big Apple Group, the company that I work for, protection of adjoining property is our specialty. And we would like to work with any interested parties in ensuring that a proper, a proper monitoring protocol is put in place. 
my phone number is 718-767-2900, extension 421. Um, thank you. That's all the time I need. Thank you, Mr. Paris. Are there any questions for Mr. Paris? Well, I see none. So we will move on. Um, as is typically the case, you know, we go uh, five speakers uh, opposed, five speakers in favor. We don't have any opposed uh, speakers signed up here, so we will continue with a favorable. Uh, next speaker is Jamie Weissman, to be followed by Jeffrey White. Hi. Good. Uh, good. Good. Good morning. Um, I wanted to, to uh, introduce myself. My name is Jamie Weissman. I'm the app, um, representative of the applicant, uh, and I'm here to answer any questions you have about um, our intention in relation to the project. Are there any questions from the commission for Mr. Weissman? I see none. Thank you. Thank you. So the next speaker will be Jeffrey White, to be followed by Arisa Napper Williams. Jeffrey White does not appear to be in the room. No. Okay, thank you. So the next speaker would be a recent Napper Williams to be followed by Richard Bass. Good morning, Chair Lady Lamont, uh, Vice Chair Knuckles and the City Planning Commission. My name is Orisa Napper Williams and I am the Executive Director and Visionary of Not Another Child, Inc an advocacy organization which impacts communities of color to combat gun violence and support grieving families. Through our programs, workshops, and events, we provide reactive and, pre and proactive wholeness and healing through unconventional therapeutic support services to those that have experienced a violent and or traumatic event. I speak to you today and I come today in support of the 749 Van Sinderen project as the developers have shown their commitment to nonprofit organizations mm -hmm. such as NAC, Not Another Child. We are looking forward to welcoming a new community partner who will support our, our work that we do. Um, especially including our initiative Out the Hood Project, which enables participants to experience career and cultural diversity through reading, research, and excursions. And having the support of local developers is imperative to organizations like ours that strive to make impacts on a citywide and global scale. Please accept this testimony as my enthusiastic support for this rezoning. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you very much, Ms. Napper Williams. And I just wanna say how, how heartening it is to hear about the work that you do. We value it, we support it, and we need more of it. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Knuckles. Uh, thank you, Chair. Those are my uh, sentiments exactly. Thank you, Ms. Williams, for your noble mission and your work. Thank you so much to both of you. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the commission for Ms. Napper Williams? Again, thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, next we have Richard Bass and then Robert Roachford. Good morning, thank you. Morning. I'm Richard Bass, I'm with Ackerman LLP. I'm really here just to answer if you have any last questions. Thank you. Are there any questions from Mr. Bass? I see none, so thank you very much, Mr. Bass. Um, and then the final speaker that I have signed up is Robert Roachford. Yes, I'm sorry, uh, Madam Chair, that's Bishop Robert Rochford, <clears throat> and he is the senior pastor of the New Life oh, Tabernacle okay. in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I'm Bishop Mitchell Taylor. I'll be reading for him and also reading Bishop Jeffrey White's letter. Um, my name is Bishop Robert Rochford. I'm the senior pastor oh, okay. of the New Life Cathedral in Brooklyn, New York. I'm speaking today to show my unwavering support for the 749 Van Sinderen Project because it will offer 100% affordable unit, units, and that is exactly what our community needs. Members of my church and the surrounding community have expressed their desire for new housing options as the market rates continue to skyrocket. 100% of the units at 749 Van Sinderen will have rent that is significantly less than the market rates for comparable units throughout the neighborhood. This project is a glimpse of hope for thousands of residents seeking new affordable housing, including congregants I represent. Many residents are anxiously waiting a project like this to be approved and are looking forward to applying for these units. Additionally, there will be 17 units in this project that will be reserved for the formerly homeless. I respectfully ask that you consider 
this important project for your approval. Thank you. Second letter from Bishop Jeffrey White from the Greater Temple of Praise uh, in Brooklyn, New York, located just five minutes away from the proposed 749 Vincendoran project. I speak today in support of this project because it brings new housing and investment to an underserved community, under, underserved community where many of my congregants and I live. This rezoning will improve the quality of life for the whole community by replacing a rundown site with 100 plus new affordable housing units in our community. Affordable housing and access to quality living while making modest wage is scarce. In Brooklyn, over 130,000 residents live in public housing that is rundown, dilapidated, and unsuitable for living. New housing is not a desire, but rather a need. We are in desperate need of permanently affordable housing options, and I fully support projects that will offer better housing solutions for our residents, children, and grandchildren. I strongly urge you to consider this project for your approval and think of the 130,000 plus Brooklyn residents who live on NYCHA campuses that are in gross disrepair. Thank you for your consideration, Bishop Jeffrey White. Thank you very much. Are there Thank any you. questions from the commission? Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Rockford, um, welcome. Um, is there anybody else present who would like to speak on this item? No further speakers signed up. If not, then. I, I will say that this remotely held hearing, a meeting is adjourned. Thank you. If there's no other business, and I'm sorry, I didn't ask that. I just presume there isn't. Is there? Okay, uh, then this, this meeting is adjourned. Oh, you wanna say something? Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Chair Lermont, uh, there is no other business before the commission, but I do have some public information to share with our audience, if I may. Uh, for those of you who were unable to or did not wish to testify, you can submit written testimony online by selecting this hearing on the upcoming meetings page of the NYC Engage portal through DCP webpage or by mailing your comment to City Planning Commission, Calendar Information Office, 120 Broadway, 31st floor, New York, New York, 10271. Thank you very much. So now for the third time, I'll say it and I mean it this time. This remote public meeting is adjourned. And thank, thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.